Okay, so in section 6.1 we did a lot of review of a whole bunch of terms like uh, monomial, binomial, polynomial, trinomial, degree of the terms, degrees of the polynomials, and descending order, like terms, all that good stuff. And then we also did some adding of like terms, some combining, right, subtraction, and finding sum and difference functions and all that good stuff. Okay, so now in sex 2 we're going to start multiplying polynomials. And I'm going to use these terms a lot, so I just want to remind you. Monomial is ones that have one term, or polynomials that have one term. Binomial are polynomials that have two terms. Trinomials are polynomials with three terms. And I gave a whole bunch of different examples in here that we've already seen most of these already. You know, like 28 is monomial, 47y is a monomial. And you can have more than one variable. You could have like 37x squared y cubed. That's a monomial because it's got all multiplication in there. No adding and subtracting. Binomial will have an adding or subtracting in it somewhere. That's what makes it bi because it has two. So 28 plus y, two terms there, the 28 and the y. Or 81x minus 12x to the fifth. There's two terms in there. There's the x term and the x to the fifth term. Or you could have trinomials. That's kind of a big deal. So when there's three terms, so negative 7y squared is one term, 14y is one term, and 6 is the other term. Three terms. And again, you could have it with more than one variable as well. It's uglier, but you can do it. Okay, now remember that we learned in section 4.1, actually. So we learned from 4.1 this property, and honestly, it was a review even then, that when you have b to the p times b to the q, that's b to the p plus q. Now we're going to use that for multiplying monomial times monomial. So if you look at these two problems, they are a monomial times another monomial. I'm sorry, I already did this problem and my video got lost, so bear with me here. So let me do it with you. So you say, okay, 27x cubed times 7x to the fifth. This is all multiplication in here. There's no two terms. This is all one term and then another term, two monomials. So you can rearrange the order then. You could say, okay, that's 2 times 7. You've got an x to the third and an x to the fifth. So I rearranged it. But 2 times 7 makes 14. And with those powers there, you add them because of that property right here, right? That you add the powers. So that makes x to the eighth. All right, same with b. b is just more complicated because it's got a negative in there and stuff. But it's still a monomial, because there's no adding or subtracting on this, times another monomial. Yes, I know there's a negative in there, but that's not the same thing as subtraction, right? There's no two terms on this. So I'm going to rearrange it. I'm going to say, look, it's 5 times a negative 6, which is going to make negative 30. I've got a to the 4th times a to the 3rd, which makes a to the 7th. b to the 2 times b to the 5, which also makes b to the 7th. So there we go. I have a monomial times a monomial. Now remember, this is really a review of, of section 4.1. We already did all of this um, back in that section. Okay. All right, so now, what's the difference between, and you want to be careful, this one we just did, 5a to the 4th b squared, blah, 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 and 5a to the 4th b squared minus 6a to the 3rd b to the 5th? Because they might look very similar to you. and the one on the left has this multiplying in it, right? And that's because there, the parentheses right there is a key, right? Because there's parentheses in there and that subtraction's inside that parentheses, it's not really subtraction, it's a negative. It's multiplication by a negative, okay? Whereas the back one, the second one, is actually subtraction. Another way you could do this back one would be to put this guy in parentheses like that. Okay, so when the negative's inside there, it's actually a multiplication, right? The parentheses there is just to stand in place for the timesing. But when it's in the back here and there's a subtraction in between, that's two terms. That's addition subtraction. We learned how to do the first thing in the multiplying in section 4.1, right? And then we learned how to do this back one with the subtraction, we just, well, we've already learned it from a previous class, hopefully, but we just went over it again in section 6.1 where you're combining like terms. And in this case, these are not like terms, so you wouldn't combine them. There's nothing to combine. All right.
Now, the reason I'm going over that, you might be thinking, oh, that's obvious. Well, yeah, but it's a, it's a common mistake to confuse the two. So try to keep your multiplication, which is the first one, separate from your subtraction, which is the second one. All right, now let's multiply a, mono, uh, me, a monomial times a polynomial. So we did monomial times monomial up here, right? There was no adding or subtracting. The only thing that was in there was a negative. Now, a monomial times a polynomial, what you want to do is you want to distribute. So, let me put that in. You need to distribute the monomial. That's your general plan. Okay, so how do you distribute a monomial? Well, it's, it's not hard. Right? So, let's look at this one. You have negative 8x times 3x minus 5. So what you do is you distribute that negative 8x. You say, okay, negative 8x times, neg times positive 3x, right there. And then you do negative 8x times negative 5. Now the first one's going to turn into negative 24, because negative 8 times positive 3 is negative 24. And x times x is x squared. You add the powers. 1 plus 1 makes 2. Now in the back one, a minus 8 times a minus 5 makes positive 40. But that's subtraction there because it was subtraction right here. So it's, it turns from subtraction into addition. But there's still an operation in there because it's a binomial. You're going to end up with a binomial at the end. And it's positive 40 and there's an x, so it's positive 40x. Good. All right, now... What about the more complicated one? <laughs> Let me throw this in there. All right, so it's pretty ugly. So you got to take this negative, excuse me, this three w y squared, and you got to multiply it by the four w squared, by the no negative nine w y, and by the positive two y squared. Every single one of them gets a three w y squared. So I kind of wrote it out here. So you do three w y squared times the first thing, which is four w squared. Then you do 3wy squared times the next thing, which is negative 9wy. And notice I'm putting addition in between them. Um, it's up to you if you want to do addition on this one. If you don't, if you want to make it just 9, then make this subtraction there. You've got to have one of them be negative. Personally, I think it's a little bit easier to spot with the adding, like make it addition, but then you'll turn it into a subtraction in a second down here. But whatever. Anyway, the last one, 3wy squared times 2y squared, which is right here, right there. All right, so then treat each term separately. And I don't know if you caught it, but there are three terms. There's this term right here in the front. Then there's this one. Now, it looks might look like two terms because that's subtraction there, but it's not. That's multiplying. Multiplying means this isn't subtraction. This is just a negative, okay? So there's one term, two terms, three terms. So you deal with the first term part first. 3 times 4 makes 12. You have 1w plus 2 more w's makes 3w. So it's y cubed. You add the powers. And then you have a, uh, excuse me, a w cubed. And then you have a y squared. Sorry. All right, for the next one, you've got a positive 3 times a negative 9. That makes negative 27. So if you like, you could say, plus negative 27, but that's kind of annoying, right? So we say subtract 27 instead. We have w squared y cubed. And then the last one, 3 times 2 makes 6. w, you only have one w there. And then you have a um, y squared and another y squared. So that makes y to the fourth. I'm just going to underline these so you can see. Okay, so the first, the single line went, went right there. The double line term went right here. Notice, by the way, I'm double clicking and my computer program gets that it's all one term. It highlights all of them automatically. If I double click over here, oopsie, it's going to highlight. Oops, it's because of the underline. There we go, that one. It highlights it all together. And then over here, this is all one term. Okay, and that becomes 6wy to the fourth. Now, I know at the bottom of the page, there's this multiply two polynomials thing. That, that actually belongs at the top of the next page. Sorry about that. So um, let's read what it says. 
it says to multiply two polynomials, which is not what we've done before. I mean, we sort of did, but it was kind of easier. We were doing monomials, because this guy right here is a monomial. And the 3wy squared, that's a monomial. So they're, they're polynomials, but they're a little bit simpler. But to multiply two polynomials, you multiply each term in the first polynomial by each term in the second polynomial, and then you combine like terms if possible. So let me type that up. Hold on. All right, there we go. There's the first example. So what they're saying is multiply each term here by each term over here. So if you look, this is two binomials here. Matter of fact, I'm going to make a little note to ourselves. Hold on one second. There we go. This one that we're doing right now is a binomial times a binomial. Just good to know, good to keep in mind. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the first term, which is x. And you're going to multiply it by each of the back terms. So you can say, OK, I want x times x. And then I want to add to it an x times a 1. Right? So there's x times the first term, x times the second term. Then I'm going to add to it, now I want 6 times the first term, plus 6 times Now, if that looks familiar to you, I should hope it does. <laughs> Let's put it that way, All right? Because there's a little acronym to help you remember this, and I'm really bad, and I actually treat it like it's a verb, even though it's not. All right? So that first one, it's the first one on the first term times the first one on the second term, and so we we the acronym we use is firsts, and then this one is the outers because it's x and one, which is the outside parts. And then here it's the inners. That's an I right there. And then the lasts, it's the lasts, right? You may be thinking, well, inners, what do you mean? Well, because the 6 and the x make the inside part of that. And then the last, the 6 and the 1, are the last ones. So you might have heard somebody say, foil it. I, I say it all the time. It's, it's terrible, though, because foiling isn't really a verb, I know. but it's a way to help you remember what you're doing, right? So you want to do the first ones, then you want to do the outers, then the inners, and the last. And if you do that, it'll keep them in order, and it'll help you make sure you don't forget any. And then you combine any like terms you have, which in the middle here, the outers and inners together makes 7x, and you're done. So it's FOIL, right? Which is just a way to help you remember distributing. That's all it is. It's the distributive property. It's just the distributive property with very special care. Okay? All right, let's do it again for, oh, and hopefully that looked very familiar, right? Hopefully, <laughs> right? Everybody should have used distributive property like that at some point. All right, now let's do it again for this harder problem here. So we have 3p minus 5q times 7p plus 2q. Okay, so for the fronts, we're going to have 3p, 3p times 7p. We'll figure that out in a second. Then we have 3p again, 3p times, so first, 3p times 7p. Now i got to do 3p times the second term, which is 2q. All right, so now I've done both 3p's. Now I've got to do a minus 5p, or it's be minus 5q times 7p times the first term. Then I do a minus 5q times 2q. Okay, so I did 3p times each of these, and then I do 5 q, negative 5q times each of these. And every time I'm doing it, I'm separating it with addition. All right, on the front one, I'm going to have 21 because 3 times 7 is 21, p squared. There's p times p is p squared. Then I'm going to have 6pq. Then I'm going to have minus 35. You're not adding them. This is multiplication in here. So it's minus 35pq, or qp if you want. But remember, pq, qp, the order doesn't make any difference when it's all multiplied like that. Minus 10. Ooh. Q squared. The one thing I will say is I probably just want to make it minus 35 instead of plus and negative 35 like that. All right, these two in here are like terms because PQ, QP, it doesn't matter what order you go in. So it's 21P squared 
35, or excuse me, 6 take away 35 is negative 29 PQ, or QP, again, order doesn't really matter, minus 10 Q squared. And we're done.